Welcome to Arirang News. It's Wednesday, April 23rd here in Seoul. I'm Sean Lim and thanks for joining us as we continue our coverage of the search and rescue operation of a sunken ferry off Korea's southwest coast. With the investigation into this tragic disaster widening and speeding up, more crew members now find themselves in custody. For more, we turn to our Na Hyung-kyung standing by at the news center. Hyung-kyung, what's the latest on finding out who's responsible? Well, Sean, the special prosecutorial team is broadening the scope of its investigation, and authorities are now looking for irregularities in the overall port operation business. Offices of the Korea Shipping Association were raided in the afternoon, and that came after the team raided some 10 offices and homes of the practical owner of the Sewolho ferry operator Yu Byung-won earlier in the day. Prosecutors are closely looking into whether Yu and his two sons have made illegal overseas transactions, evaded taxes, or embezzled funds. Now, Yu's two sons are the biggest shareholders of the ferry operator's holding company. The Yu family reportedly owns assets worth more than $230 million, excluding debt and assets kept outside of the country. And since yesterday, the National Tax Service has been conducting a special probe into four firms closely related to Changhejin Marine. Company and dozens of personnel, as we know, including you and his two sons, are currently under a travel ban. And I understand we have some screenshots from the time of the accident that shows that the crew could have released more of the life floats. That's right, Sean, and that's contrary to what one of the arrested crew members said yesterday. Let's take a look. We tried, but couldn't get near the life floats. We really did try, but it was so slippery that we couldn't get there. Now, but pictures released show that the crew members getting on to rescue boats while a Coast Guard official is hanging tight onto the guard rail trying to release the life floats, and he succeeds. The official was able to kick two of the life floats into the sea, as you can see there. And these pictures uh, will likely cause people to ask even more what if questions. Also, the now arrested crew members claimed uh, the ship was listed 90 degrees when the crew was told to evacuate, but those pictures show that it was only listed about 50 degrees. And we're just getting reports that investigators have actually charged crew members with homicide. That's right. The police and the prosecution that are jointly investigating the case say they've charged those taken into custody with negligent homicide. Investigators believe the crew members had room to at least try to save the passengers. Now, 11 out of the 15 crew members who all survived are now in custody. Among those is, of course, the captain, Captain Lee Jun Suk. He is charged with five offenses, including negligence of duty and violating ship crew law, which mandates the crew to secure the safety of all passengers in emergency situations. Some of the crew have reportedly shown signs of regret, admitting to their mistakes and saying, in hindsight, they should have taken rescue measures. In the meantime, we are learning that North Korea has expressed condolences for the victims of the ferry. Uh, yes, South Korea's Unification Ministry says a telephone message was sent Wednesday afternoon by the chief of the Red Cross Society of North Korea and was addressed to the president of the South Korean Red Cross. The message uh, simply expressed its deep sorrow over the many victims of the ferry disaster. Uh, the last time Pyongyang sent a similar official message was in 2003 when a Mass fire at a subway in the city of Taegu resulted in some 370 casualties, and also when a typhoon killed nearly 200 people. That was also in 2003. Back to you, Sean. All right, thank you, Hyung Kyung. Well, turning back to the investigation into the ferry sinking, another solid piece has been added to the puzzle of what may have caused the Sewol Ho ferry to capsize abruptly. Only a few weeks ago, crew of the Sewol Ho ferry reported that the ship's steering unit showed malfunctions. Our Park Ji Won has the details on how their repair request fell upon deaf ears. This is a repair request form submitted by the crew of the Sewolho ferry to ferry operator Changhejin Marine Company about two weeks before the tragic accident. It says the steering gear of the now sunken ferry was sending no voltage warnings. Crew members said they had to reset the power and rely on an onboard power supply while they were waiting for power to be restored. The request form added the fundamental cause of the issue was unknown. However, the ferry operator took no action on the issue. 
Korean broadcaster YTN reported Wednesday that a ship repair company that had worked on the Seolho ferry before said it had not repaired the steering gear of the Seolho ferry any time recently, nor had it received any repair requests about the steering gear. Experts say the steering gear is key to safe sailing for a ship, that any problem in the steering gear increases the likelihood of an accident, and that ships with steering system problems should be prevented from setting sail. However, Changhejin Marine Company appears to have continued to allow the ill-fated Seolho ferry to operate for more than two weeks, leading up to the accident last week. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. To test the theory that crew behavior and company policies led to the capsizing of the Seolho, experts in Japan have run a simulation. And according to the findings, all signs point to the ferry's cargo, which they believe was not loaded properly. Son Jung-in has more. This is closed-circuit television footage of the Seolho ferry on the day of her departure from Incheon Harbor. Vehicles are loaded onto the vessel one after another, 30 more automobiles than was previously declared. The last vehicle is loaded and just three minutes later, the ferry sets sail. Experts say that's not enough time for the crew to correctly secure the freight. We assume the crew tied only two ropes instead of four. They may have just tied things up loosely before the departure. Japanese researchers carried out a simulation to find out what happens when freight in a vessel is not fastened properly. They made a model 1 50th the real size of the Seoro and raised the center of mass in consideration of the fact that the Seoro ferry had been renovated recently. First, they ran the simulation without any cargo. Sailing at 5 km per hour the same speed as the Seoro, when turned right, the model sharply leaned outward toward the turn due to centrifugal force, but did not capsize. Next, they added some weight to the ship to account for the mass of the freight and fastened it tightly. When given an abrupt turn, the model again tilts sharply to one side, but is able to balance back without falling. Then they tried again, this time with the same amount of weight, but without fixing it properly. At first, it seemed to be navigating smoothly, but as soon as it makes a sharp turn, it lists it to one side and capsized in a matter of seconds. When a vessel makes a sharp turn without its freight properly fastened, a heavier centrifugal force is applied, causing the vessel to list more outward. In extreme cases, the ship can capsize. It is common for the captain or the chief mate to take at least an hour to make sure all cargo is secure tied before setting sail. Japanese experts say there was no time to do that in the Seoro's case last week, which leads them to believe that improper fastening of the freight may have been the main cause of the accident. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Let's turn now to Pengmokhang Harbor, the closest area from where the accident took place. Our Ji Myung Gil is standing by at the site of the search and rescue. Myung Gil, what's the latest on the situation there? The death toll is rising fast and currently stands at 156. Divers are searching the third and fourth floors of the vessel, where many passengers were believed to have been at the time of the accident. Ten fishing boats are using powerful floodlights to help divers operate in the dark. Also, 900 flares will be used for overnight search operations. However, if ocean currents become strong, divers may have to temporarily suspend their search operations. Some 150 people remain unaccounted for and are presumably trapped inside the sunken ferry. Of that total, nearly 90 percent are students from Tanon High School. Temporary funeral parlors were set up at the Pengmokan Harbor today to provide funeral services to the families who lost their loved ones. So how are the families handling this impossibly difficult situation? It is an endless day of waiting for the breed families here at the Pengmokan Harbor who are in great despair. I got a chance to talk to a father whose son was on the sunken Seoro ferry. He said when he first received the news, he was assured by Tanon High School that his son was alive. He remains one of the missing. My son was very gentle. 
He was a quiet boy and never disobeyed us. He would listen to all the things we would say to him as parents. He was very diligent and thoughtful. My son, I feel really sorry for the things I wasn't able to give you. Although sometimes I scolded you, that was because I loved you so much. I love you, Changmin. It's heartbreaking to think of the horror you must have gone through. The father said he wanted the sunken vessel to be lifted to the surface as soon as possible so that he could see his 18-year-old son for one last time. This was Kim young -gil reporting live from Pengmokan Harbor. Thank you, myung -gil. and we'll be back in a second. It's been a strenuous week of mourning, not just for the family and friends of those who died aboard the sunken ferry, but for the nation, reflecting on what this tragedy means. Koreans are holding candlelight vigils, making donations on and offline, and trying to cope with this tragic incident together. In Ansan, the city touched the most by this tragedy. A memorial service is taking place to pay tribute to the young victims from Tanwon High School. We have our Kim Jian joining us live from the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. Jian. Sean, I'm at Ansan Olympic Memorial Center where an altar has been set up so that the public can pay their respects to the fallen. As you can see behind me, portraits of 48 Tanon High School students and teachers are displayed. More than 6,000 people have paid their respects to say and, and to say their last goodbyes. In front of the Memorial Hall, people place post-it memos, letters to the deceased. I talked to one of them, 59-year-old Oh chun Sik, who was born and raised in Ansan and has lived there his whole life. I hope the students are in a better place, and I pray that their hopes and dreams that they had here are fulfilled there instead. I have an aching inside that cannot be put into words. This is a temporary altar, and local people, authorities are set, setting up a great uh, funeral so that in a larger location so that other people can come in. A grand funeral will be held in the Ansan City's Hwarang Recreational Park, where people can come in and pay their respects starting Tuesday. Jian, how have volunteers stepped up to help with the memorial arrangements? Well, citizens from Ansan and volunteers from all over the country are coming here to lend a helping hand, bringing necessities and medical supplies. To help support our community in this time of need, we have made all of our medicine and resources available to Don Juan High School and will continue to do so until the altar is removed. This could not have been possible without the help of the community. It shows that the nation is coming together in times of crisis. Our hearts certainly do go out to all the victims and their families. How about the student survivors? Are they going to go home soon? A majority of the students could leave the hospital later this week, but some of the guardians of the students want to let them stay put in the hospital due to concerns of mental trauma. In high schools, some 50 counselors are on the ready to provide regular counseling sessions and medication if they are needed. This was Kim Jian live at the Ansan Olympic Memorial Hall. Thank you, Chiwon. 
Jian, that is. Uh, 14 teachers from Tamwon High School were on the ill-fated trip to the resort island of Jeju when the Sewolho ferry sank. And on that Wednesday, when the ferry capsized, three teachers were rescued while 11 were missing. One of those teachers, who we know now didn't make it, was more concerned about her students than herself until the very end. Chun Soo-young is her name, and Arkani Lee has her story. In the last desperate moments before the ship was going down, a daughter texts her mother, Mom, the ship is sinking. In shock and in confusion, the mother calls her daughter, Chun Soo-young, right away. To her boyfriend, Suyong texts him that there are no life vests. I'm sorry. The boyfriend calls her immediately, but they hang up after 12 seconds on the line. Suyong tells him that she needs to call her students' parents. Her last words to her boyfriend, I love you and thank you. It was Suyong's second year as a homeroom teacher at Tanwon High School. And as for the school's yearly field trip, this one to Jeju Island on the Seulho Ferry was her first. Her room remains untouched since the day she left for the ill-fated trip. Her bike, too, remains parked, waiting for Suyong to return. Apparently, her grandmother is also waiting for her granddaughter to come home safely. But as much as there is sadness over the loss, her mother is also proud of her daughter, who put the lives of her students before her own. Connie Lee, Arirang News. People around the nation are trying to find a place for their frustrations and sorrow over the ferry incident. So some have decided to express their support through sending care packages to the families who have been holed up in Jindo Island for a week now. And the well wishes also include letters of hope. Kwon Sawa reports. Jindo's post office is backed up with letters and daily necessities for the families still waiting for their loved ones to return into their arms. People from all around the country are reaching out their hand to those affected by the tragic Seolho ferry accident. A total of 3,300 care packages sent through registered mail have been counted at the post office in Jindogun County as of Wednesday morning. But many, many more wait to be processed. From bread and bananas to beverages and daily necessities like toothbrushes and shampoo, all were sent to help the families camping out on Jindu Island, most in the Jindu Indoor Auditorium. A post office employee says 70% of the parcels come from schools, but many also are sent from women's support organizations and volunteer groups. They say that they usually use one eight-ton truck to sort mail a day, but these days they need more than four. For easy sorting, the packages often have descriptions on them of what is inside. Others have messages on them, such one which reads, You were born like a miracle, so please come back like a miracle. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. After the tragic Sewolho ferry accident, which took many innocent lives on board, the government is now stepping up to prevent future accidents from happening here in the nation in hopes to make Korea a safer place. Our Lee Seung Jae has more on this drive to enhance nationwide safety checks. The Sewolho ferry tragedy has forced the government to take a look at the level of safety awareness and preparedness in the nation. To make sure such accidents are prevented in the future, the government said Wednesday that it plans to carry out intensive safety checks on all major industrial and transportation facilities in the nation. The inspections were ordered by President Park Geun-hye and Prime Minister Jung Hong-won. Improper safety inspections have been blamed as one of the reasons for the disaster. Some of the facilities that will be subject to checks include industrial complexes, trains, ports, tunnels and bridges, as well as ships, 
like the Sewerho Ferry. The nationwide inspection is set to begin on May 9th, but the government will first ask the government and civilian operators of such facilities to carry out voluntary safety checks for two weeks. Meanwhile, a new bill called the Student Safety Act was passed by a subcommittee within the National Assembly on Wednesday. It would require all schools to conduct a safety education process before going on school trips. In addition, the Culture Ministry also hopes to make Student Safety Day a national holiday. They plan to speak with family members of five students who were killed last summer while attending a Marine Corps camp for help organizing it. Lee seung Arirang News. Anytime the presidents of South Korea and China talk, the topic of North Korea usually dominates the conversation. But the Sewolho Ferry disaster was foremost on the minds of President Park Geun-hye and Xi Jinping on Wednesday when they spoke by phone. Kim Min-ji reports. In a phone conversation Wednesday, President Park Geun-hye thanked Chinese leader Xi Jinping for his words of comfort to the victims of the ill-fated Seoul ferry disaster and expressed sadness that some Chinese passengers were still among the missing. She said he was also deeply saddened by the fact that the majority of the missing and deceased were young students. He added that his thoughts were with the victims and their families. The Chinese president also said that Beijing will provide search and rescue assistance to Seoul. The two leaders also talked about North Korea. President Bak urged her Chinese counterpart to dissuade Pyongyang from carrying out a fourth nuclear test, saying it would change the security paradigm in Northeast Asia. Bak said another nuclear test could start an arms race and create a nuclear domino effect in the region. North Korea carried out nuclear tests in 2006, 2009 and 2013. President Bak added that a fourth test could also hamper efforts to resume the stalled multinational talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea. She reassured Pak that both nations share the same interest of a denuclearized North Korea. He said that Beijing would do its best to help maintain peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. The Chinese leader added that he would encourage dialogue between the related parties and also express support for the trust-building process initiated by Bak and for a peaceful reunification of the two Koreas. Kim min Arirang News. North Korea is fully prepared to conduct another nuclear test, according to the South Korean government. With U.S. President Barack Obama on his Asia tour this Wednesday, there's been fresh speculation that Pyongyang may attempt to make a statement while he's in the region. Shin Se-min has more on whether that gesture will take the form of a fourth nuclear test. South Korea's defense ministry says North Korea is ready to conduct a nuclear test at any time. In a press briefing Wednesday, a Ministry of National Defense official said the North Punggye-ri nuclear test site appears to be on standby with an open ticket in hand. This would run counter to what a recent report by the U.S.-based North Korea analysis site 38 North suggests. It says it's unlikely that the regime will carry out a fourth nuclear test while U.S. President Barack Obama is visiting the region over the next week. The report cited analysis of satellite imagery, which indicates the recent activities at the nuclear site differ from those leading up to past tests. But a Korean official said the data on the 38 North website is different from what the government has. The U.S. says it is keeping close watch on movements in the North amid speculation that it may carry out a fourth nuclear test. Speaking to reporters on Air Force One, White House spokesman Jay Carney said the U.S. is monitoring movements at the North Punggye-ri nuclear test site. The U.S. State Department echoed Carney's sentiment and urged North Korea to exercise restraint. We continue to urge North Korea to refrain from actions that threaten regional peace and security and to comply with its international obligations and commitments. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Weather conditions on Jindo were fairly good today. For more, we turn things over to our Kim Bo-kyung at the Weather Center. Bo-kyung.
Sean, all efforts must be put into rescue operations through Friday as strong winds and showers are on the way this weekend. Well, at the moment, some relief that wind speed has dropped to 1.6 meters per second, which is about one sixth of the speed that we got yesterday at this time of the day. Also, waves remain fairly calm at 0.5 meters. Now, tidal currents are moving at an average rate of about 1.6 meters per second. However, that will further drop to half a meter per second four times tomorrow at 3:17 a.m., 10:17 a.m., 4:38 p.m., and 9:52 p.m. So, more progress could be made then. The weather on Tindo for tomorrow looks to be better than today. Sunny skies are forecast with calm waves and breezy winds. Well, that's all the weather updates I have for Chindo at this hour, and I'll be back with more after 10. Thanks, Po Gyeong, and that's all we have for you at this hour. I'm Sean Lim. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.